All right, so this is uh, section three of chapter one. Uh, we've talked about kind of what st statistics is, talked about the different types of variables, and if you recall the last time that we did a lesson, we talked about how we display categorical data. And so today what we're going to do is talk about how do we display that quantitative data. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to look at what's called a dot plot. <clears throat> um, look at a dot plot here, and what that's going to do is that's going to show us a couple things. It's going to show us uh, how often each uh, each individual uh, occurs, uh, and then also to show us center. Uh, it's going to show us shape, and that's a big part of it. It shows us the shape. Do we have symmetrical data? Do we have uniform data? Do we have uh, skewed data right or left okay but with a dot plot it's pretty straightforward it shows each data value um, as a dot above its location on a number line and it's that simple and the way you draw it is you're gonna draw and label the axis so you'll have one axis here you'll scale the axis appropriately and then plot your values here and so what we're doing is we're looking at um, an amusement park and we're looking at the cost that each ride has and so what we want to do is um, they get charged for every ride that they do so no admission no parking and so what we want to do is we want to make a dot plot um, of each cost and there's 22 samples in here so what we'll do is if you look the lowest price that we have here looks like a dollar twenty five and the highest price that we have it looks like is three dollars so what we'll do is we'll draw our x-axis okay and these are going to be costs sorry that's a little crooked here writing on the iPad and this is in dollars and again the lowest is 125 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this by a quarter each time so that's 125 that's going to be 150 that's going to be 175 two dollars two twenty five two fifty two seventy five and then finally three because that's the max that we have to go to and so what you'll do is you will go through and you'll count well how many times do I have a dollar twenty five okay and so a dollar twenty five occurs once twice three and then it looks like one more time down here so that's four so that will give me four dots directly stacked on top of one another for a dollar twenty five okay so Miss Mosher is going to pause this video here uh, and give you a few minutes to finish out uh, the next one you're going to look at is for a dollar fifty and however many times a dollar fifty occurs that's how many dots you draw above it so take a few minutes Miss Mosher is going to pause it take a few minutes um, complete the dot plot and then we'll go through from there on. So now you should have noticed that a dollar fifty occurs eight times. So we want to draw eight dots four, five, six, seven, and eight. You should have noticed that a dollar seventy five occurred six times. One, two, three, four, five and six two dollars occurred one time there was nothing for 225 250 was for two rides so that's one and two and then finally three dollars had one so there's your dot plot <coughs> and again um, the big thing here we can see is that it's shaped uh, it's what we call skewed right so the dat the majority of our data is concentrated on the left hand side or the low end side uh, and the tail goes out to the right so um, if you were to draw a curve over this it would look like that and so you see the tail is actually going out to the right that's what we call a skewed right data set and we'll get to that later on but again the two the dot above the two dollars just means uh, it represents the ride that costs two dollars which is the stratosphere and that was the only ride that costs two dollars so that dot above two is the stratosphere which costs two dollars to ride 
Okay, now what percent of the rides in the sample cost a dollar fifty or less? So we need to figure out how many dots do we have that are a dollar fifty or less. Well a dollar fifty had eight, a dollar twenty five had four, so that's twelve out of the twenty two rides. And so percentage wise, or as a decimal, that's point five four five, which is fifty four point five percent. So fifty four Oops, I messed up there. Make my dot bigger. So 54.5% of the rides were a dollar fifty or less. Okay? So I talked to you about shape here. And if you look to describe our shape. What we're doing is, when we describe the shape of a data, okay, what we're trying to do is we're trying to look for major peaks, not for minor ups and downs. We're looking for clusters of values and obvious gaps. And we want to decide if the distribution is roughly symmetrical, meaning the peak is in the center. or clearly skewed, which means, like we mentioned before, the majority of your data is concentrated um, one way or the other. Okay, so if we look right here, we got some different examples here. Roughly symmetric, you see how it looks perfectly just like a mirror, and you guys know what the term symmetric means, right? And so it looks roughly mirrored. This right here, is what we call bimodal, the second one here, and we call it bimodal because the term modal is a term for most often. And so we have really two peaks here and here. So because we have two peaks, we call that bimodal. Roughly uniform is flat everything's about the same across the board every every uh, every column of dots is about the same number there <laughs> okay and then here's what we got here here's what I was talking about with the skewness if you look skewed to the right if we were to draw a curve over our data the tail looks like it's going to the right the majority of our data is concentrated on the left hand side so that's what we call skewed to the right Whereas here, if I draw a curve over this data like so, the tail's going to the left, or the majority of my data is concentrated on the right-hand side. And that's what I meant when I said skewness, either skewed right or skewed left here. Okay, so again, you're looking at the direction of the tail. Whichever way the tail is going, that tells you the skewness. So we're going to say look for tail. Look for tail. Alright, so now, when we're trying to describe the distribution of our data, we use the acronym SUCKS, S-U-C-S, and so what we'll do is we'll always describe the shape, which we just finished talking about. We'll talk about, are there any unusual features? And when we talk about unusual features, what we're looking for are, are there any outliers? Are there any outliers? And then we want to talk about the center. Where's the center of our data? And then finally, we want to talk about the spread, which is also the variability. What's the spread like? OK, so we're going to use the acronym SUCKS. Shape, unusual features, which is the outliers, the center. And usually, we use the median. And then where's the spread? OK, again, the median is what we use to really do the center of the data, but the middle the median is the middle value in order in an ordered set of data and ordered is the key there we have to have a set of data that's placed in order before we can find the median okay and then any outliers an outlier is a value that falls outside the overall pattern and there's several ways that you can determine if a value is an outlier and we'll get into that one of them is uh, you know the one and a half IQR rule 
Uh, another one is if the data is more than two standard deviations from the from the center of the data, then it's considered uh, an outlier. But we'll get into all that today. We're just going to kind of judge it by the eye. And so if you look right here, we got two two dot plots here that we're going to compare. Um, talks about the the nitrates or the organic compounds and main ingredient in fertilizer. Uh, and then these nitrates, when they run off into the streams, have a toxic effect on fish. So what they did was they studied two streams to measure nitrate concentrations at 42 places on Stony Brook and 42 places on Mill Brook. And then, again, these parallel dot plots are showing us the comparison between nitrate concentrations for both. So again, if we talk about explaining what does the dot above 12 in Stony Brook graph represent, that means that that particular sample that they took out of Stony Brook had a nitrate concentration okay, of 12 milligrams per liter. So again, what that means is one of the spots measured on Stony Brook One of the spots measured on Stony Brook had a nitrate concentration of 12 milligrams per liter. Just like that. Had a nitrate concentration of 12 milligrams per liter. That's what the dot above the 12 means. So then what percent of the nitrate concentration measurements for each stream exceed 10 milligrams per milliliter? So again, exceeding 10. So that means what happened above 10. So if it helps, we're looking for above 10. So if you look up here where I'm drawing, anything past to the right of that uh, red line. And remember, so if we're doing Stony Brook first, Remember, there were 42 spots there, so 42. That would be 2 divided by 42 to get the percentage there. And that comes out to be 0 0.048 or 4.8%. And if we're doing the same thing for mill, if I look, how many dots are to the right of that red line for mill? Well, I'm seeing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so that's 11 out of 42, and that gives you 0.262, or 26.2%. Okay, now describing the shapes of both, we want to talk about whether they're symmetrical, whether they're skewed, uh, what we might have here. So when we're talking about the shapes of these data, um, if you look at Stony Brook, You see how the majority of that concentration of data is really on the low end there to the left. So that means that the tail is off to the right. So really for Stony, we would say that it is skewed right. And we want to mention no apparent outliers. Okay, now with mill, this one, this one's kind of tricky, but I would say for the most part, the peak's in the center. <coughs> and so because the peak's in the center, it's fairly symmetric. Not really, but I mean, that's our best option here. So fairly symmetric. But you also notice out here, 18 and 20, okay, um, that could possibly be outliers. So we would say with 18 and 20 possible outliers. And again, later on we're going to talk about, well, how do you determine actually if it is an outlier? What's the rule? And again, there's really two methods. One is what we call the one and a half IQR rule, where IQR is your interquartile range. Uh, and then the other one is uh, is it more than two standard deviations from the mean? That's only really if you have uh, a normal distribution there. 
okay and so then it asks us to compare the centers of those two so where's where's the middle dot at well if you look um, the middle dot so 42 dots each what we could do is we could really count you know if you look at Stony Brook we could count and find that 21st dot so that would be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one around in here okay and so what that is that 21st dot right here is sitting above the number five so the median for Stony Brook the median is at five milligrams per liter and then I need to do the same thing for mil I need to figure out where that 21st dot is so that would be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one so it looks like the median the median for mil is at eight milligrams per liter so again to find the median find the middle dot and then wherever that middle dot is that's the value of it of your medium okay so then they want us to the final thing is is the variability in the nitrate concentrations for the two streams similar or different so we're talking about variability and what we're talking about with variability is the spread um, and if you look these are totally different totally different so if we're talking about the spread of stony okay The spread for stony runs from zero and if you look at the data here from zero the highest point for stony right there is from zero to twelve while the spread for Millbrook runs from let's go look at it real quick runs from zero all the way up to a max of 20 so you can see that the spread for stony is much more consistent and more concise than the spread for mill there so when we're looking at how to display and describe quantitative data remember we use uh, we use a dot plot there and each dot represents a value that was sampled uh, and then we want to make sure that when we're describing the distribution of these quantitative data we use the acronym SUCKS which is for shape unusual features which are our outliers the center which is used which is described by the median and then finally the spread what is the variability what's the lowest value we have and then what is the highest value that we have